what's up guys midnight strike here and today we're going to take a look at an album that really i didn't even know exist i didn't even know the band existed until just today when i watched another reviewer's review of this and it just popped up on my dash so i decided hey why not let's take a look at it and it's the album filthy empire by heaven's basement and it came out last month and it's actually their debut and it's a hard rock album so guitar driven and I gotta say, I'm really impressed with these guys. I've never heard of them before. Apparently, they used to release demos off of MySpace back in the day, back when that was still popular. So, or at least that's what this reviewer said. Uh, Daughter of Vampire. Really cool reviewer. Got a sweet accent. You guys should check her out. I'll post her review. Maybe I'll just do a video response as one of my other friends, uh, Shadowblade9209, did. He also has a review, so I'll post that as well. But, um, ugh. Basically, I just wanted to get my thoughts out on it because I got one of my other friends into it and he's just like, I mean, he, he said word for word, that was delicious. So <laughs> really sweet album, sweet band, and I don't even care that it's late. So digging into it track by track, Heaven's Basement, Welcome Home, really good song. Almost for a second, I thought it was a cover of Sanitarium. I'm just like, what the fuck is that doing on a hard rock album? So, but really good song really great beat and i don't know i just really like it the tone is just perfect and it, the vocals are really sound structurally on this album so it completely so number two is fire fire again sounds like a motorhead cover because motorhead is has a song off ace of spades called fire fire so some of these titles are akin to a lot of other classics from the 80s so um Fire Fire, completely different song from the Motorhead song, and it, it's, again, stellar, stellar song. It's got really good, like, really, ca it's really catchy. It's got a really catchy drive to it, especially how he sings, and just, just the structure of the verses is my favorite part of it, and it, it just goes balls out on the chorus, especially, so it's really good there. It's just stellar track. Another thing on this album that's really good are some of the solos, especially in, say, Can't Let Go, and, um, what's another one? I'm Electric, I think that one has one in it, but just, like I said, amazing album. Um, Nothing Left to Lose, this one's alright, I mean, it's good, it's not really a standout track on the album by any means, but it's still really good. This is basically how modern day hard rock should sound. This is how it, this is hard rock done right. Something that bands like say Buckcherry don't know how to do anymore. Not really picking on Buckcherry, but they did release 15, which is really stellar album. Um let's see. Lights out in London. This one is, has a really catchy groove to it and I really love how he hits the high notes in the in this song. He sounds a lot like, the singer sounds a lot like Chris Daughtry, actually. A little bit Chris Daughtry combined with the dude from The Offspring. A little bit. Meets Hard Rock. So, it's just <laughs> stellar on this entire song. This entire album, practically. And, um, I'm Electric. The beginning is kind of weird. Just, like, the lyrics. Like, I am this, I am that. I am the table. No, not really. But, um, had to throw that in there. But, um, it's really good after you get past that. But the beginning kind of drags the song down a little bit, I guess. The Long Goodbye, this one is alright. It's not really a standout on the album, especially compared to Welcome Home and Fire Fire, as I mentioned before. Those two are probably just two of my favorite songs on the album. But, let's see, um, Heartbreak and Son of a Bitch. This one's awesome because he's got a little twang in his voice and it's not too, it's not country to the point, it's not like country sounding to the point where it's country. It's still on the hard rock groove, I guess, of it. And it's modern enough where it doesn't sound dated or it doesn't sound generic or bland or just anything that's already been rehashed a million times in the past. So, and let's see, Heartbreak and Son of a Bitch. These, that's a good song. Be Somebody, eh, it's alright. One thing on this album is where they really struggle, I would say, are the slower melodic songs, such as, you know, let Can't Let Go and the, and the Price We Pay. The Price We Pay is better than Can't Let Go. Or not Be, no, not Can't Let Go. Can't Let Go is good. 
But, um, be somebody. The price we pay is better than be somebody, but it's still not one of my favorite songs, I guess. Can't Let Go, as I was about to say before, is one of my favorite songs. It's really hard, really catchy, really fast-paced, especially towards the midsection on, and it's got really catchy beat to it. And as always, on this entire album, the vocals are phenomenal. The guitar is phenomenal, and just, I don't know, the best part about this album, I would say, is the vocals and the guitar, the tone of the guitar, especially. So, Jump Back, this one's another one of my favorites, and it's got a really good melody to it. Executioner Day, Executioner's Day, this one, not really a standout track, but it's not bad by any means. Still a really good, really sound song, just in every way. I don't know. Especially the, the melody, the rhythm of the guitar. That's what I like the best about it. As I said, you know, the guitars and the vocals are the best the best part about the albums. And they're really good at the fast-paced songs, but one thing that Heaven's Basement really has to work on are probably the slower, more melodic songs that just kind of take a step back from all that. The Price We Pay was okay. Be Somebody I wasn't really a fan of, you know, partially due to the chorus. It had a good beginning, but once it got past the beginning verse, I would say that um, it sort of drug the album down a little bit. It's not to the point where it's bad, per se, but it's not stellar, wow, amazing. So, overall, new band, awesome. They released a couple of EPs called just Heaven's Basement 2010, Heaven's Basement 2011, Heaven's Basement 2012, just, you know, just their band and the year that they recorded it in. And I'll have to check those out as well, because there's probably not songs that were on this album. There's probably extra songs on there that weren't on this album. So even though they're demo quality, they'll probably still be really good, in my opinion, at least. This is what I, what I say. Overall, this album deserves a 9 out of 10, I would say. It's a really good album. Really just sound album. There's really not much I can say. I just listened to it, what, four hours ago? And, I mean, I'm still listening to it on repeat. And I wanted to record this album, you know, or record this review after I got back from work. So, you know, it's Heaven's Basement, I guess. I'll be looking forward to more albums in the future. So, this is Midnight Strike 3625. 9 out of 10. Keep calm and rock on.